Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this quick video I'll be showing you some of the subdivision surface modeling tools or sub D tools in the new version 7 work in progress. So here we have the new in V7 toolbar group and off to the left hand side you've got a flyout for sub D tools. You can grab this bar at the top if you'd like to dock them off to the side as I have here. And this will just make it easier to find these commands and look through what's there. I'm going to be modeling a fork and I'm going to start with a sub D plane. The divisions of this plane will be two by four faces and this will represent one of the tines. I'm going to use the mirror command, mirror this across, and then mirror across Y to have all four. Now I want these to be evenly spaced so even if it was like this, if I select all four and use distribute, I can distribute along the x-axis and the end ones will stay exactly where they are. These are separate sub-D planes and I want to bridge between them. So I'll use the bridge command and select edges on either one and enter to run the same command again. And if you get a twist like this, just click on one of the dots on the handles and it'll sort itself out. Now this is one sub D instead of four separate ones. And I want just the edges right along the end here. So I'll use control and shift and left click to sub object select this edge. Then control shift left click to sub object select that edge. And to get everything in between, Control shift double click one of those and I'll get all those edges. If you're on Mac, use Command Shift and it's the exact same thing. So here we have the gumball and I want to use the extrude handle on it to extrude out three times. And this is where the end of the head part will be, so I'll scale in a little bit here and then extrude out probably four or five more times for the length of the fork handle like that. Now I want to taper just the head part so I can do a sub object selection with a fence as well. So if control and shift are held down I can do a fence selection of all those objects. I'll then use the taper command to make just the head part tapered like this. Now if you want to select an edge loop, you can control shift double click it. A face loop would be control shift click and then control shift double click on an adjacent face. And an edge ring would be control shift click and then control shift alt double click to get the edge ring. Now each one of those actions has a command version uh, as all Rhino features do. So you could use cell edge loop, cell face loop, or cell edge ring. But I'm just using control shift double click to get a quick edge loop selection there. Make the neck a little bit skinnier. Like that. Now the sub D is completely flat. It has no thickness right now, so I'll use offset sub D and I'll use the solid option, a distance of 1 16th of an inch. And that gives us one sub D surface, but it now has a thickness. And the edges are going to be rounded. I want to give the head part a little bit of a concavity, a little indent right here in the body of the head. So I'm going to turn on the edit points with edit point on. I'll use control shift while rotating to snap into an ortho view so I can get a clean fence selection of these edit points. And then control shift rotate to snap out of that ortho view. I want to relocate the gumball to the tip of the tines and I'm going to do this in a quick manner by holding down the control key, clicking, dragging, and then releasing control. And then I can rotate numerically by clicking and releasing on any one of these rotation arcs. I want to rotate around the X axis of the gumball, so I'll click and release there and rotate it minus one. 
minus 1 because of the way these arrows are going. So negative numbers will go the opposite direction. And that gives me this indent right in the body portion of the, the head part. I'll turn off the edit points. And if I go into my right view, you can see we don't have a lot of thickness here. If I were to start to scale the back of the fork handle, that scaling falls off basically to the next edge loop. I want to show you how you could scale and have that transition, that change, fall off further along the length of the fork. So I'm going to go into the Transform toolbar, and here we've got the Soft Transform icon. If you left-click it, you can enable it, change the radius, and also the shape of the fall off. So I'm going to enable it and press Enter. And then if I sub-object select these and start scaling, you'll see the change falls off over the radius set, which was 5 by default. If I want this to be numerical, I can click and release in that scale handle and type a value. So 3 times its current thickness. And now I've got 3 16 thickness here because my offset was at 1 16 the right-click option over the soft transform is very useful. If you right-click it, it toggles off that enable option. So right-clicking just toggles it on and off. And if you don't have it on, then it's not going to fall off that change. If you do have it on, then it will. Like that. Okay, and so I've got it off now. Soft transform is off. And I'll take just the head part, use control, click, drag, and release control to relocate the gumball. And I'll rotate the head part up like that. And then I'll take the handle, relocate the gumball, rotate that down like that. I'll make the back of the fork a little bit wider like this. And I want to give it a little bit more curvature on the top. And I'm going to do this by Control shift clicking this face, rotate under, Control shift click this face. And I want all the faces in between. So I'll use Control shift double click to get all the face information in between those two selections. And then I'll move this up. And so I've created some curvature on the top and I haven't added any material underneath. If you wanted to remove an edge loop, you can simply Control shift double click it and then use the delete key. To do the opposite, you could Control shift double click and use insert edge to pick where you want that edge. If you were to control shift click a face and delete it, you'd actually create a hole. If you wanted to combine faces, you could use merge face or delete a single edge. So merge faces, and you could pick these two faces and enter. And that would be the same thing as deleting this single edge. The last thing I want to show you here is that if we do an edit on one side of the model and we want it on the other side of the model, you can use the reflect command. And reflect is going to ask for an axis and the side that you'd like to keep. So I'll select my object, use reflect, and you could define an axis with two clicks or you could use the world Y here. Click on the side you want to keep and then enter and the change will be on the other side as well now. The nice part about this is that the reflect command remembers the last used reflection plane as well as the last used picked side. So if I edit my fork like this and then run reflect again, I get the multi fork. So you can have either a remembered world axis XY or you could 
have a defined axis that will be remembered as well as the object moves around. And that is a quick introduction to some sub-D surfacing tools in the Rhino 7 work in progress. Thanks for watching.